Hello and welcome back to Red 5 Scale Models. Um, last time out we painted the figure's face up and showed you a couple of techniques in terms of how to use go from darkest to lightest tones and we're going to basically repeat the process um, across the rest of the figure now and paint up things like so the body armour, the uniform, the boots, um, things like that. Very, very straightforward, like I say, work from dark to light and we'll take you through that next. Okay, so what we're going to start off with now is um, what we call zenithal, um, zenithal highlighting. It's basically just to help you get an idea of the shadows and, and where the light would be hitting the figure from. You just take a flat white in an airbrush and at about kind of that kind of angle, a decent distance, about five to, five to six centimetres away, give it a quick dust over, an eye on top down. Picking out the more raised areas, and then you'll see it's helped really bring out the shadows. Once that's dry, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so that's the zen zenithal uh, highlighting base coat done. Uh, I used a black Vallejo primer for it. Um, I tend to use black for 99% of the things I build. If you've got a particular colour you like, go with that. But I think black. Yes, it's very dark, isn't it? It's mm. uh, almost black. Johnny. Yes, I shall, I shall need to get the black out. Johnny? Yes, yes black. Black, black like the clouds of death that follow me into the forest of doom. Good figures with the zenithal highlighting works a lot better. Um, now I'm going to use a colour from Vallejo's model air range, light brown, because the majority of his uniform is that kind of cocky, yellowy, light brown colour. Um, don't worry about going on to things like sort of the armour plating, um, backpacks, boots and things because we're going to come in and brush, um, paint those with a brush at a later date. A couple of nice thin coats, it's easier with an airbrush, if you don't have an airbrush, like I did with the figure, base coat it with some nice thin coats, airbrush just helps make it a bit more even and a bit quicker. Right, so that is the, um, the light brown dried there and the body armour that the man's wearing or the figure's wearing is a, is a kind of Russian camo scheme and what I'm going to use for that is a colour from Vallejo again it's actually a model air colour but because we're putting it on in such thin coats you can get away with using it with a brush it's called um, light green chrome chromo um, and then basically just block out the areas that are going to be using this paint and then what we're going to do is a couple of thin coats and I'll get back to you with the next step. Okay, so that's the first um, colour down on the camo pattern. It's just a case, next step of putting down, I'm using in this for this colour, colour called Kaki um, from the model colour range. Um, and basically just put in blobs of the Kaki because there's going to be a brown the dark green going on. So just blob it on all over and repeat the process with a dark green and a brown. I'll come to that. Uh, well, sorry, I'll show you that when I get there. So I've finished the body armor off. I'm going to let it dry. It's very rough, but it is just to fill in the, 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 the areas, block it out, fill in the uniform fill in the body armour, um, fill in the boots black, brown, whatever they want to do. I'm going to paint that a, a, a green colour and then once all that's dry and I've filled it all in, I'll get back to you for the next step. Right, okay, so that's all the base layers dry. We've just blocked out colour, done a little bit of the detail on the vest there just so you get the idea of um, what's going on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to apply washers to the whole figure. It's a bit of an easy way of trying to bring out the definition of the shades and then after that once the wash is nice and dry much like we did with the face we're going to go back over all the raised areas all the highlights with the base colors and then lighter versions and work our way up blending them as we go back and forth between the colors so for this layer we're going to use first of all the uh, agrax earth shade from citadel um, that is for the uniform 
everything basically other than the boots and the glove and for the boots and the glove we're going to use Nuln oil that will darken the whole figure down um, help tie everything together and really bring out some of those um, dark recesses um, so I'll start applying it again making sure not to be too over the top with it but be quite liberal give it a good coat let it pool in some of the recesses if you find it pooling too much again just wipe your brush off dry it down and soak it up so once I've done this I'll come back to you with the next step right we're back I actually started this be um, before I realized my bloody camera wasn't recording so apologies but what you're going to do is we're going to start the next section you can see that the Agrax earth shades nice and dry there now um, you've got some really good definition between the dark recessed areas and the um, more highlight more raised areas um, I've started here I'm using two basic colors the light brown that we use to base the whole um, of his uniform in and a color called Portland Stone both model A Technically they are for airbrushing, but they're nice and thin, you can work with them, they get a decent blend, and to be honest, I pick, I've got a whole load of colours, I've got Tamiya, Citadel, Model A, Vallejo, Model Colour, MIG, I just use whatever's at hand, rather than sticking to specific brands if I like the colour, um, I can, you can make it work normally, and I find it just, it's more than ample for, for figure painting, um, and it's just a case of basically getting your triple zero brush, loading it up, I'm not using a wet palette for this particular paint because it's already wet enough. Um, just stick it on to the raised areas. Work with it as best you can whilst it's nice and wet um, in highlight areas at the edge of the clothes. Be careful, don't go too far in. You're going to um, take advantage of the fact that the Agrax Earth Shades made the um, base light brown go a nice darker colour anyway um, and then just try your best to get that nice blend as best you can again this is kind of diorama quality it's not going to be entering any specific figure painting categories um, I made a 50-50 blend mix of the two colours um, so we're going to stick that one again working a little bit further up a little bit more on the pronounced details trying to get a nice highlight on the edge of fabrics um, just to kind of accentuate the folds these resin figures have got a lot of very very nice details I would highly recommend them over just molded plastic kits um, like your master boxes and your tummies and things um, they are a lot more expensive but you get what you pay for very much so and being honest it makes the painting of the actual figure so so much easier so I'll leave you I'll, I'll rather I'll fast forward this um, just so you can see how I go about it I'll not show you the whole thing you don't want to listen to it or watch it all and I'll get back to you once I've done the majority of the uniform worth mentioning at this point you don't want to be doing for example like on his arm here this the light's going to be kind of hitting from that kind of angle so you want to try and just highlight the front of the arm try leaving the back um, areas that are going to be closer to the actual armor itself um, just to get a bit of a blend going there
Okay, so I'll tinker about with that a little bit more, but that's basically the, the gist of it. Things like the vest, I'll go in and highlight the top sections again with the base colour for yellow and the brown, uh, sort of, sorry, for the green and the brown, probably add a bit of yellow to them just to make it stand out, edge highlights and things like that. For the boots, um, they are pretty grey, um, I wanted them a bit darker, so I might be inclined to paint the boots um, with a darker grey and then repeat the process of the null oil, the backpack, head in there with the base um, olive green and then again yellow to it just to kind of bring those highlights down and the same for the collar but the collar I'm going to make it look a bit whiter um, kind of like that um, and I'll use probably a very very light ghost grey for that um, and just do an almost dry brush but on a very very small 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 scale so I'll, I'll I'll mess about with this behind the scenes. The process is always the same, working from darkest to lightest. You can, it depends on how far down the rabbit hole you want to go. You can make three shades, two shades, dark light, um, or you can make 20. Um, various different shades just work methodically, kind of on a section, keep it nice and um, wet, keep it moving, keep it going, and you can get some half decent results. Um, again, like I say, for dioramas, not for entering competitions for figure painting uh, in particular that's it like i say trying to get blends on those is a completely different ballgame. okay so that's just done there now um the process has been the same throughout basically no matter the color no matter what you do which part of the um, figure you're painting start with your darkest tones work your way all the way up to your lightest tones you can make as many blends of those tones as you want be it two colors three colors 20 colors depends on how in depth you want to go At the end of the day it's 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 your hobby you enjoy it however you want to enjoy it if you plan on um learning more and more and want to get really into figure painting and enter competitions this might be a good starting off point um to, to help you get a, an idea of the um, basic concept but like I said these aren't in any way shape or form going to win any sort of figure painting competitions but we will hopefully prove more than serviceable for things like armor builds, dioramas um, and help bring a bit of life into your scene so thanks for listening um, and hopefully at least one person out there has learned something and I've helped someone um, for the next lot of builds I'm going to stick with the same theme, the Soviet theme and I'm going to build myself one of these Um, see how it goes. I'll do a video to go along with it. It's not going to be particularly in the, the, the nitty gritty of how to assemble a kit and things like that. It's going to be more of weathering processes, painting techniques, um, stuff like that. I will show a bit of the build, how, how I go about cockpits and things. Um, and if you like what you've seen so far, subscribe to the channel for more updates and follow me on at Red5Models on Twitter. And thanks for listening.